or to the other party. You dance and you don't love the person no more, well, have a conversation if you can, or have a person to intercede, and you just tell the person in a sensible way, look, yeah, this ain't working, the Lord misdirected me, which you can't really do, but if you won't use that as an excuse, and go your way. The best fish has yet to be caught. But Phil, you were a terrible youngster. Tell us if you want to tell us a little bit about it. I mean, then we'll get into, Ms., uh, into the Bishop Hanshaw here. Sure. You know, because people like to know how the Lord have, have reached down into the muck right. and pull up people who people had written off. Sure. If you don't mind. I don't want to put no, you on the spot. No, but no you have problem. a story to tell. No problem. You know, at Government High School, I went to the, the old Government High School in 1969. 74 graduated, did A level 75. Well, in 1976, I started snorting cocaine in opposite to the Government High School and did it all through college, um, but was able to. Always had discipline in school and um, always spent two to three hours in the library, so I was able to. Um, graduate from university, passed the CPA exam, worked with Coopers and Ligrand, which is now Coopers Price, but continued um, the same thing. And then in 19, um, this is now 19, did very well, started a company called Circle and yes. did very well, the, um, but partying straight through. Yeah, yeah, like brother, the great friend of mine, what's his Kevin. name? Kevin. Oh, Kevin, Lord, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. I always ask the Lord, but you know, you can't question, you could question, but you can't really be disrespectful. I say, when I heard Kevin had passed, I say, I say, Lord, what, what? And Kevin was the one Smith, let me say this publicly, the one Smith, I ain't talking with Phil and Ryan, talking about feeding nobody. There was a time I had to do a business transaction with Kevin. Kevin said, Bodie, what you want for what you would have done? I gave him the, the bill. And Kevin didn't quiver uh, yeah, about it. I think it was 10000 or 12000 Kevin said, Bodie, come for your money. And I want to, for his memory, I want to say, Kevin, wherever you are, you are a great <coughs> man. Go ahead, sir. Amen. Yeah. So, yes, Kevin Duke and I were partners in Gold Circle, and you did extremely well. I mean, pulled down millions of dollars. Yes, I know. Every year to the bottom line, and then um, made some missteps. And uh, 1987, I think it was, you know, we were experiencing problems. And, of course, you know, you... The drugs became more prevalent um, as you're going through, you know. So rather than me probably snorting my coke once, twice, three times a week, it probably became six, six, six times a week. And um, just didn't have the, the discipline to pull out of what we were going through, so we crashed. Yeah. And um, I was at that point that you said, like the prodigal son, yes. I am very back home with my daddy. Yeah, man. In 19, 2012. Sorry. Eight years ago, this is two, 11 years ago, so 2005. Right. He screamed out, it's devoted with all my heart. Lord, what is it all about? What is it all about? I've done everything, followed the world, did everything. And he took me to the word, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew. You know, Southern Philip, you're a crazy man, that's like me, you know. <laughs> You know, when I had my Damascus experience and uh, my, my cocaine snorting, it wasn't that bad, like you. I mean, I, I, you, you I had probably over a six week period. My, my first marriage had gone south. Mm -hmm. I had a friend called Farmer Brown back in the day uh, from Martin Street, and he, said, he saw me one Friday. He said, Man, Bodie, I got this thing to relieve your, your pain. I uh -huh. said, What you got? He said, I got a white lady for you. Uh -huh. I said, Man, I don't like white women, man. I, 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 I dated some of them, but I don't like them like that. He said, Man, I ain't talking about white woman, I'm talking about a white lady, man. So he introduced me to this thing called the Kamok. Oh. Put the little foil paper, the little rocks, little tooth, little... Three I, but he said, when I light it up, you in hell. I say, I say, in hell? Man, when he light that thing up, I said, mm -hmm. I went from here straight down to Pluto. And I came back in two seconds. And I must say, ladies and gentlemen, that cocaine is a destructive force, okay? Yeah. And um, it, it will hit you before you know it. And Phil, I did that for about six weeks off and on, mostly on weekends. And um, once Friday, I, I had a party, my, my, my birthday party, at my mansion in San Susi. My mansion. I invited uh, everybody who was anybody who thought there was somebody who wanted to be somebody. Everybody was there. I left there about 7 o'clock that evening before the party started. So I'm going by my friend. I had a friend called Fury over in the Sea Breeze area. Fury had this big thing, a Turkish pipe with one long, long piece of rubber hose. Man, he dropped a piece of coke on that. The coke must be as big like a, like a, 
a nugget you buy in these um, fast food restaurants, like a chicken mac nugget or something. Uh -huh. Big. Man, he says for your boy, when he liked that up, that was seven something. You know what time I got on the next morning? Seven something. The party finished. Everybody eat up all the food, drink up all the liquor. The only thing they didn't cut was the cake. And you know, Bishop Hanshill and uh, Phil and the rest of you people and the rest of you listening, and I, I, I will never tire to say this because some of you are going through this right now. And you need to understand that there's nothing too hard for the Lord to accomplish. And if you all dump me, oh Lord, I'm going to preach. And I went on my knees at 7 o'clock that morning in a little corner in my house. And I talked bad to God. I, I spoke to him irreverently. I, I, I brought him up. I grabbed him and I wrestled like how Jacob did on the ladder. And I said, Lord, you can fix this thing and you can fix this now. Lord said, well, you can't talk to me like that. I said, you made me. And you have an obligation to fix me. And Melanie Ancho, Bishop Ancho and Phil, instantaneously, instantaneously, it was lifted. No silence, no rehabilitation, no withdrawal, no nothing, no nothing, no nothing, no nothing. And I thank God for the experience because of the, unless the Lord had helped me, and until I had gone into the house of the Lord, he went into the temple, Pastor Gary Curry, and of course Bishop Walter Ancho. He wasn't Bishop then, that's Melanie's husband. It was simply the apostle. That man used to come around my house and after I lost my big house, I had a small house in, in um, Troxdale. And every Sunday, Walter, Bishop Hanshaw, well, Apostle Hanshaw would come knocking on my door. But I had people saying, when I see that I was the Apostle's car, I wouldn't answer the door. Even though my car was in the driveway. So he got tired of coming around. And then one Sunday, I said, time God ain't coming. And I was outside washing the car. And he got up suddenly. <laughs> say, let's go, Otland! Well, uh, you know, I was too ashamed, so I had to go. Yeah. We went down to Golden Gates with Bishop Ross Davis. And it was that, at that point I, I rededicated myself. Because I've always been a, a believer in, in Jesus Christ. I've always accepted him. But I didn't know he'd accepted me. I was saying, who's going have big money just like you? Millions! All the women I want, all the wine. But 341-6673. Um, Bishop Hanshill, call on line, but let's get a call quickly. Good morning.